Hey everybody, this is Tech Guy Charlie. Welcome to the channel. So, the stable One UI 6 update, or better known as Android 14, is now rolling out for the Galaxy S23 Ultra. Lots of new features to talk about, so let's start. Alright, so the first and the biggest change that you will notice is with the drop down notification panel. As you can see, it has been completely redesigned. So now on the top, you've got the dedicated toggles for Wi Fi and Bluetooth. And the quick settings are down over here. So they've separated out the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth button, which I kinda like. And speaking of buttons, if you long press on any of these, the settings for that particular item is gonna open in a pop-up. On One UI 5, pressing on a button would take you to their actual settings instead. So I think the settings pop-up is also a nice change. Now tapping on the pencil icon will take you to the settings. Now here you can tap on top, to edit the buttons that appear when you partially open the quick panel. So these buttons. And tapping on full will let you edit the buttons that appear in the quick settings. Oh and one more thing that's new is now you've got the option to access the full settings with a single swipe. The setting to switch this is right over here inside the quick settings instant access. This was actually possible on One UI 5 but you'll need to install GoodLock and then the quick star module and enable quick setting instant access. So it is nice to see that Samsung is implementing features from GoodLock. One more feature that has been carried over from GoodLock is the ability to reposition the clock on the lock screen. So what we're gonna do is long press on our lock screen to enter into the customization mode. Now we can tap on the clock and reposition it to wherever we want. So this is a really nice change. And just to confirm, you could not do this on One UI 5.1. Also, when you play music, the album art now covers the entire notification of the music player on both the lock screen as well as when you open the notification panel. So this is really nice because previously we only had a small album art that would appear on the left side. And check out that animation on the seek bar. That looks awesome. Now let's move on to the camera because they've made quite a few changes here. Alright, so first off, now you can take high resolution photos in any aspect ratio. So right now we're in the 16 is to 9 aspect ratio. And what we can do is tap here and select the 50 or the 200 megapixel option. Previously, the high resolution option would only appear if you set the aspect ratio to 4 is to 3. So this is a really nice change. Okay, so you might have noticed that when you take photos and quickly view them in the gallery, you'll notice that the phone kinda enhances the photos automatically. Momentarily, you'll see the original photo and then the enhanced version. So this is the automatic quality optimization and now we have the option to tweak this. So if we go into the camera settings, you'll see a new menu which says advanced intelligence option. Here you have the toggle to change this from maximum to medium to minimum. I recommend leaving this on maximum so that you get the best possible photo. But if you want a photo that looks more authentic, then set this to minimum. And the scene optimizer toggle is here as well. So it looks like what they have done is they've moved the scene optimizer from the main menu to inside the advanced intelligence options. And the scan document and text has its own menu. So here it is. And also looks like you've got a new option which says auto scan. So as the description says, it will automatically capture the document and the text without the need of pressing the shutter button. Now in my previous videos, you might have heard about auto FPS. It's basically like night mode, but for video recording. Now before the update, we used to have a simple on or off toggle. Now what they have done is they have given us an option to use this feature only for 30 FPS or for both 30 and 60 FPS videos. So that is nice. Also, when you enable the option to show the grid lines, now the camera is going to show you if it's level or not by placing this bar at the center of the screen. And you're gonna see this when you hold the phone in landscape and vertically. So I think having this is quite useful. They've also added a new camera widget, which basically lets you launch the camera in whatever mode you select. So tapping on pro video takes us to, well, pro video. Selfie takes you directly to the front facing camera. And lastly, the time lapse takes us to the hyperlapse mode. That is awesome, right? 
So what you want to do is head on into widgets and then look for the camera and then add the custom widget to your home screen. Next, change the name to whatever you want. We will rename this to vlogging mode. Next thing you want to do is set the starting mode of the camera. We're going to set this to director's view. And lastly, if you want, you can also change the widget's background. So pick a picture from your gallery. And that's it. Once you have the widget on the home screen, tapping on it will take you directly to the camera mode that you've set. So these widgets are basically customizable camera shortcuts. Now in the video mode, you'll notice the menu that shows you the frame rate and the resolution has been reworked. And now it looks much better because you've got proper descriptions. And also you guys know that swiping up or down switches between the front and the rear cameras. You've now got the option to disable this feature in the settings. So here is the setting to disable the swipe up and down to switch camera feature. And lastly, now you've got the option to position the watermark on top or the bottom of the photo, which One UI 5 did not have. So now let me show you a brand new security feature. Okay, so go into the settings and then scroll down to security and privacy. Inside, scroll down and here you'll find a new security feature called auto blocker. So when enabled, this feature is gonna keep your phone safe by number one, blocking apps from unauthorized sources. So I think it disables side loading. Number two, it checks apps for malicious activity. And number three, it blocks command via USB, which I think is super useful. And moreover, it also seems to have some sort of malware protection for messages and the ability to block software updates via USB. So this is a really nice security feature. I would suggest keeping it on unless you're sideloading apps on your phone. And if you're keen-eyed, you also might have noticed the new font. Comparing it with the old one, I think that the new font actually looks really nice. And I've got the bold font option switched on so that makes the text even more legible. Oh yeah, before I forget, emojis have also been redesigned. So here you can see a little comparison between the two. It's not a major redesign, but there are subtle differences between the two. And you know what? I feel that the older set of emojis were better. But yeah, that's a personal choice. You may like it or you may not. They've also added a couple of new features to the weather app. So when you scroll down, you'll notice the air quality tile along with dew point, pressure and visibility. And also the wind tile now shows you in which direction the wind is blowing as shown by the little arrow. And the sunrise and the sunset is now shown by a big diagram and the sun actually moves depending on the time of the day. And finally you've got the moonrise and the moonset information. So tons of improvements to the weather app and also there's a new weather widget. So let's open the weather widgets and here you'll see a new widget called weather insights which basically shows you the weather insights like the air quality or chances of rain. Now on the previous versions of One UI, there was no way to view the password of the wireless network that you're connected to. But on One UI 6, you can do that by tapping on this button and by entering your phone's unlock pin. So there you go. And you can also do the same with the passwords of the networks that you've saved on your phone. Very convenient. Now, if we go back to the main settings, you'll notice that they've added a shortcut for the battery settings right here below the display. And this takes you to the main battery settings. So here you've got all the features like power savings, charging settings, and wireless power share, etc, etc. This is actually the exact same menu that you'll find when you go to the device here and then battery. So this shortcut makes battery settings easier to access. Did you know that now you can drag and drop photos and videos from the gallery into other applications? So in the gallery, select the photos and videos that you want to share. Then keep the finger on the screen until you see the photos separate out like this. Now you can use your other hand or your other finger to launch the app in which you want to paste or share the photos. So let's open up WhatsApp and send these photos to my other number. And there you go. So this is gonna make sharing photos and videos a lot easier. And you can do the exact same thing with text. 
So what I'm going to do is highlight some text in the web browser and now I'm going to tap and hold the highlighted text until it separates out like this. Now we can use our thumb to launch any app on the phone. So once again launch WhatsApp and once we let go of the finger it will paste the text in the chat automatically. So there you go. Awesome right? And once you get a hang of this, it's actually easier than manually copying and pasting text across different apps. The two finger saga also continues on the home screen. So whenever you want to reposition or add an icon to the home screen, you can keep the icon selected and use your thumb to navigate to whatever home screen you want to drop the icon to. Very useful. And the exact same method also works for dragging and dropping widgets. Whenever you use the Smart Select Screenshot tool from the Edge panel, you will notice that the phone shows you a magnified view whenever you adjust the screenshot area. So this is very useful because this will let you fine tune whatever you are taking a screenshot of. Also, what's really awesome is that even if you pin the screenshot, you'll still have the ability to extract text from it. This was obviously not possible on One UI 5.1. Another great feature that has been added from Goodlock is the Prevent Pop-Up View Minimization. So basically on One UI 6, whenever you open apps in the pop-up view, like we've got the camera open and it is now recording a video. So the thing is, now you can launch any other app in the pop-up view and the apps that are already open will stay open. So as you can see, I've just launched WhatsApp in the pop-up view but the camera is still open and recording the video. On One UI 5, the app will close unless you install GoodLock. Did you notice the video recording has stopped? So this is a really nice addition. Whenever an app has multiple notifications, like here, WhatsApp has two messages. What you'll notice is that when you expand the notification, they will have a slight gap between them. Previously, notifications from the same app would be grouped up together even if they were expanded. I honestly prefer the previous version. I think it looks much cleaner. And also, now you've got the option to sort notifications as they arrive. So you can group them by time. To enable, head on into the settings and then notifications. Here, tap on sort notifications and select by time. Now, your notifications will be sorted as they arrive rather than by priority. So let's go into the gallery because here they've changed a lot of things and added some new features. Alright, so you might already know that if you long press on a particular item in an image, you get the option to extract that object. So you get three options on One UI 5. But on One UI 6, they've added a fourth option which lets you save the extracted item as a sticker. So there you go. I think this is awesome because you can use the sticker in your chats like this. Also, when you open a photo in the gallery, you might have noticed this I button at the bottom of the screen. Tapping on this will show you more information about a photo or a video. It is the exact same thing as swiping up. Now here, you'll notice that they have added a couple of options like remaster, portrait effect, and the object eraser tool. So you don't need to go into the image editor if you want to use these options. And speaking of the image editor, let's open a photo in the editor and what you'll notice that it has been completely redesigned. It's essentially the same thing but they have moved some things around and now the items are grouped up in appropriate menus. Also in the lasso tool, you can tap on an object and the phone will automatically detect the outline and select the image for you. On the previous version, you had to manually draw around the item that you want to select. So that is another nice change. Now in the gallery, if you tap on the hamburger menu, you'll see a new feature called Studio. This used to be the video editor on One UI 5. And it's got more or less the same set of features. Now one thing that you can do is tap on these three dots, go to settings and enable show studio on apps screen and you'll be able to see the studio app icon in the app drawer. And also speaking of the app drawer, one thing you'll notice is that the word Samsung is now gone from Samsung apps. Like the Samsung members app has been renamed to members, Samsung music is now music, 
and Samsung store is just store. So this is a nice change. I like it. And lastly, you can now switch over to Bixby text call whenever you are on a phone call just by pressing on this button. They've also added an option right here which allows you to take notes whenever you are on a phone call which I think is gonna be super useful. And by the way, these notes are saved in the Samsung Notes app. Alright, so I guess that covers all of the major changes and every new feature that One UI 6 update is gonna bring. And I know there are a few that I haven't covered but I think I've covered the important ones. And as always, if you found the video to be helpful, make sure to like the video, share it with your fellow Galaxy friends and subscribe to the channel because I've got plenty of videos on Samsung devices. And this is Tech Guy Charlie, signing off.